Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. There is an issue that sometimes comes up for people who are considering moving to another country, uh, often where they'll have a bunch of benefits, maybe in terms of low cost of living, lower tax, maybe different lifestyle, etc. And this is the subject of healthcare. So if you come from a kind of many anyway, uh, developed countries, so let's say places like Canada, Denmark, Germany, UK, Ireland, Australia, Japan, etc. You are probably used to having some sort of state-sponsored single-payer health care. And so the idea is that a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to miss that maybe. And so I don't want to make the move because of missing out on that. So today I'm going to talk about what is the value of that health care? And is it something that you should be radically considering in your plan of where to live? We will dive into it right now. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for your support. If you would like help with where to relocate, how to get set up, how to get residencies and citizenships, international tax optimization, forming companies, opening bank accounts, please reach out to us. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send us through our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so let's dive in and discuss this. Um, so obviously healthcare matters, right? Health is, you know, I put out a video the other day discussing, you know, eight ways to improve security and uh, freedom at the same time. One of the things I was discussing there was health, clearly super important, especially as people get older. I deal with clients who are, you know, retirement age, uh, et cetera. You know, it becomes an increasingly important part of your consideration. Now, this being said, I think we can separate out two sides of healthcare. One is the quality of healthcare, and the other is the cost of healthcare. On the quality of healthcare side, I think it's fairly obvious that depending on your individual circumstances, the health conditions you have, your state in life, whether you have kids, etc., you want to find a place ideally that is going to provide you at least satisfactory, ideally better uh, healthcare. Right? That's that's pretty clear. So good hospitals, good access to doctors, good emergency assistance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now it turns out in a lot of countries, you can get this uh, simply through paying in the private system. So for example, in Bulgaria, uh, the general healthcare system, not so good. In Mexico, uh, I've often heard it described as there's a sort of a three-tier healthcare system. So the bottom tier is very poor, but the top tier turns out to be quite good. If you're in some place like Serbia, I mean, there's better private health hospitals and then there's free ones that they just lack anesthetic and that's a big problem, right? So if you're going into a place where you can afford it, you can afford to pay for the private services, great. Now just a bit of context here, private services don't have to cost that much. And that brings us into the second side. So I first kind of had a discussion with someone some time back uh, who they had left, uh, they were from Denmark, they'd left Denmark, and they were talking to a bunch of their friends saying, hey, you should leave, you know, you're paying it's like the top tax bracket, it's like 56%. You know, you've got all these different issues, et cetera. And their big holdout was they said, oh, but we have our health care in Denmark. And the interesting question to ask here is, okay, what's that worth? What does it cost? Because let's say that you're making $200,000 a year, just as a simple number, 2,000, 100,000 euros, whatever. And let's just say you have to give up half of that approximately in taxes. Okay, that's 100,000 a year. What kind of health insurance can you get for 100,000 a year? pretty freaking good health. In fact, it's impossible uh, that I've seen pretty much anywhere. Even in the US, I don't see health care that costs 100,000 a year. And now, if you're making 30,000 a year, then the value of that health insurance is probably really high. But if you're making a large number, it's comparatively probably quite low. And so I wanted to spend some time exploring what does it really cost? And I think there's two principal ways or three principal ways that we can look at this. So the first is maybe the most interesting, which is you can just compare the percentage of GDP allocated to healthcare in a given country and assign that to your own income and calculate what it works out to, right? So you can look at the US has the highest in the world, they spend 18% of GDP, which means that if on average you were making say $100,000, it's costing about $18,000 per year in your health expenses. Obviously, some people don't spend the money one year, they do another year. You tend to spend more later in life, etc. But this being said, that would be what an 18% of GDP uh, number would indicate. 
Second highest is Norway, I believe it's about 14%. Average GDP per capita is higher, so you know, it comes in similar, but that kind of gives you the top two. By contrast, you can go to someplace like Singapore, it's 4%, 4% of GDP. So, by the way, healthcare in Singapore is fantastic, right? Like we're talking about very, very good healthcare, very, very good health outcomes. So this tells you something as well. The norm in most developed countries uh, that would be considered to have, you know, kind of comparable health care to each other, UK, Canada, France, etc. These types of places, you're talking about around 10 to 12 percent, maybe, you know, 9 to 12 percent. So just imagine, okay, that of your income, you're getting 9 to 12 percent of your income is going to health care. Now let's assume, just take a look at, well, what is the tax rate you're paying? If you're paying a tax rate of, you know, 40% or something, then let's say it's 10 just for easy numbers, you have 30% left. So what's the other 30%? You could, if you reduce your tax rate to zero, as an extreme example, you could take 10% of your income, you could assign it to healthcare, you could get yourself fabulous health insurance, and off you go, right? This comes to the second question, which is, you know, what does it cost for health insurance? And people coming from the US might be used to really expensive health insurance because the healthcare system there is ridiculously overpriced. But if you go to a lot of places, I mean, for sure less than $6,000 a year, you're getting really good health insurance. You can, like the lowest tier health insurance might cost you, you know, a hundred, couple hundred bucks a year. Maybe you don't want that, et cetera. But let's just say very, very reasonably, you can have really good health insurance in most cases for $6,000 a year. Now, again, if you're somebody who, you know, is a, uh, somebody in like remission from cancer or you know preconditions that might change things quite a bit but under a normal person's situation this kind of gives you some ballpark and by the way these numbers don't scale right in other words whether you are making a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars or ten million dollars your cost for health care is more or less going to be the same uh, here in UAE I believe it's around uh, 12,000 is the most I think it's 12,000 uh, is the most that I've seen, something like that. Uh, and that's like really, really crazy, uh, top, most expensive health insurance company, et cetera. So it gives you some, some context. The last is you can look at the cost of actual treatments. What does it cost you when you really go to the uh, doctor? And what you're gonna find is, now granted, I've gone to the doctor in the US and had you know a very simple five minute visit and you know a little tiny bottle of medication and it costs $500 or something. And, you know, by contrast, you could go in Mexico and get all kinds of stuff and it costs you next to nothing. And this is the norm in a lot of these countries. If you're in Thailand, if you're in Malaysia, if you're in Turkey, if you're in Serbia, if you're in Bulgaria, etc. That's, you know, just the, the costs are simply low. So anyway, I hope that gives you some context to judge for yourself. Okay, what is it that I'm looking at in terms of what will it reasonably cost me? And therefore, based on what it will reasonably cost me, is it worth it? And that's a personal decision. I hope that helps. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. And I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.